the story, the, the the explanation of how like the fucking the stress and the weight of being like literally, bro. Imagine making the the weapon that, that changed the pace of war entirely. Yeah. Imagine the ego that that guy had. That guy felt like he had initially the, the biggest nuts in the entire galaxy. Initially. History, exactly. Yeah. And like. It was weird, because, like, I, what I took away from the movie more than the fucking nice-looking explosion, quote-unquote, because it wasn't all... It, honestly, it wasn't really all that nice. It was loud. The beginning of the movie was louder than the actual explosion. But it was such a great story, mm-hmm. and, and, like, I don't know if you would even call it a documentary or something, like an autobiography. Um, it's a, uh... It's, it's a uh, autobiography... It's a historical retelling. I think it was a really great historical retelling. Probably one of the best since Passion of the Christ. Uh, but, <laughs> but, like, even that, like... <laughs> even that, Why is that the first thing that came to your mind? I was like, yo, this is better than Passion of the Christ. I looked over at my wife, I was like, yo, Jesus could not top this. That's so crazy. It's also Christopher Nolan, so I get it. What do you think of the movie? Like, be honest. I thought it was fantastic. I, I think to have a runtime of over three hours, you have to be critically engaging. I yeah. think the, the the juxtaposition of that ego that you're talking about that comes with creating uh, something that can end mass amounts of human lives with the uh, mass amount of guilt that comes with those human lives actually being taken. Once he like, realized the guilt. While he's doing the speech and stuff. Because once he realized yeah. what the weapon was actually being used for, yeah. you, don't, the guilt you, don't, you don't have a concept of what you've created until it's been used for something that you were only imagining. That's a prime example of you need to always be your own fucking boss. If you have a million I mean, dollar yes. idea... I mean, you would hope so, and definitely now, especially like the, the, the dude that makes cars run off of water. They, they, they've had his number for a while. I'm sorry. But as soon as it goes to America, it's not yours anymore. It's, 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 theirs. it's, it's theirs. It's theirs. So government still control is a huge part of why Oppenheimer was so sad yes. because it was very clear that ego aside, yeah. he wanted nothing to do with this gigantic loss of human life. No. It's, it's a trip because, like, that movie, I, I remember telling my wife, like, I'm a diehard American. I love America. You know what I mean? Like, I'll live and die for America until literally the day I die. But I will say, they took away the American dream from that man. America is the only place. There's no real American dream. Yeah, they yeah. Can, yeah, exactly. The American dream is the biggest fan in the history of this fucking earth. What is the, what is the, the Carlin bit? Uh, it's called the American dream because you'd have to be asleep to believe it. Exactly. Straight up. This man had the world in his hands, and America took it away from him. Germany could have done it, but the U.S. Nope, would have gone Look, and as, as Kanye would say, no one man should have all that power. So, exactly. I mean, it, it's been delegated in a way that it's only getting worse. I don't think America has its best interest at heart. But that being said, I also don't think that Nitro has his either. He's been getting games taken away from him sometimes at a higher stock percentages in terms of, like, dealing with these and uh, base Joker sometimes struggles to kill. We see him off stage on the left hand side. This is his game to lose, and Elvis is definitely the type of player that'll be able to take it from him. No, I'm kind of, you know, I'm coming back to the game a little bit. I'm not too familiar with seeing Elvis's uh, dark pit. It's good. So, it's not not great, but it's good. Is he using this character a lot more? Or? Uh, yeah, this? he had like uh, like maybe like a six month run where it was just this character. Yeah, you're done. Oh, you're super done. But he does still have a Meta Knight, of course. Rare. Alright, I'm gonna go grab a drink real quick. Handle yours. You want anything or? Uh, if you want to get me a tequila and tonic, that would be beautiful. Tequila and tonic? Yeah, I right. appreciate you. All right, resurrection of Drunkester. Winner's quarterfinal qualifiers to get into top eight. It's on the way. We have Elvis once again going Dark Pit versus Nitro. This is still best of three. Uh, moving our way into a town and city. And uh, Elvis actually taking off his cool so he can really make some rule. The Chunin versus the King of Rock. Well, 
What's good, Nico? Welcome to the Backyard Smash GLS 111. Binary Code Edition. All right, a pretty close game here. Elvis keeping the pressure on. I don't know. I think that there's a little bit of a of a mentality boost that comes with playing as Kakashi Sensei. And now, what's the landing option here? Arsene is still on, uh, still on deck. Tries to call out the roll with the back air. Ooh, great stuff there. All right, we're seeing in there. Batman, and then looking like uh, Elvis starting to find his footing a little bit. He's up with stock right now. A bit you know, more, yeah. Kind of hard to get the kill at this percent, but you got Big Brother just around the corner. So let's see what Nitro can do to hold on to the stock, potentially even this game back up. Yeah, I, I think really Nitro needs to be careful off stage, kind of pushing this advantage state, like you know, because you can turn into Arsene halfway through, and that means your ex, uh, recovery is way more exploitable. I like how Elvis is kind of uh, playing a little more patient, holding on to this stock, not trying to let go, and that F tilt gonna do it. Nitro catching him again at that ledge, and that's been the bane of uh, Elvis's existence so far in this set. Absolutely, this is edge guarding. This kind of offstage play is kind of the uh, make or break, but calling out the jump, the very disadvantaged late jump there from Nitro. Beautiful call out there from Elvis. Understood that, look, he's gonna wait till he throws out the Garrett. And uh, yeah, at oh, this yeah. point, if you keep the pressure on, he'll crumble like cookies. Nitro going down to Elvis. We have an even set count right now. And I actually kind of like what Nitro did right there. He said, you know what, like, let's just forget it. Let me not just let him build any more momentum. Let me just reset this situation back. He wants to run him back to the same stage, I'm assuming. Yeah. And uh, I really feel like this is going to be a competitive game three. I, I really, really like the pick for Nitro to just say, fuck that game, let's go on to the next. That's definitely a top player energy, and you do have the privilege to just walk right back into the lion's pit and tame every single one of the big cats. However, that being said, I don't think there's anything wrong with taking a little bit of time at that, that stage select screen and making sure you make the best selection for yourself. I think that Elvis gets a lot out of very little when it comes to not interacting. Hey, yo! <laughs> Did you see that? He just, he just built up his Rebels guard, and all of a sudden, Big Brother is here to save the day. I'm telling you, man, my boy said, Jamal, go home and get the gun. <laughs> get my gun. <laughs> oh, but here we go. Uh, my man Elvis catching that spot dodge, eating up that Arsene, and there we go. Big Brother said, I got a plane to catch, and he's back overseas, and we're back at a bad situation for Nitro. Yeah, I will say Nitro normally is uh, very, very good with his usage of guns, but I think it's been getting him punished a lot more often than not. The drag down to the down smash, not finding it true, yeah. but good damage on. And him landing, I think he needs to be a little bit more cognizant of what B moves he's throwing out. He's getting put into a lot of end lag, and Elvis seems to be perfectly content to capitalize any uh, in any of those situations. Big time, and both players fighting really hard for this first stock, but it looks like right now Elvis having him on the ledge. What are we going to get here? Drag down into that up smash. Not quite going to take that first stock. Yeah, and uh-oh. Yeah, I thought that was it right there. These both players jostling back and forth for position, trying to take this first stock. Oh, okay. We're seeing Aha come up and uh, a little air dodge, and there's the... Ooh, and there's no hitbox on that, unfortunately. Nitro, maybe maybe autopiling just a bit there with the counter. Gets Nair for his trouble. Isn't gonna do it. That's surprising. 176. And he has time to recover. Just enough arson. Will he be able to take the stock before it's out? Ooh. Wow, barely making it away from that forward smash. I definitely thought he was gonna use the rest of that uh, arson to try and take a stock. And going after that F smash was probably the most surprising option. Absolutely. And we see Elvis kind of taking up residence underneath that center platform. They have moved away. We are dealing with the final destination here. Oh, and that is going to send the left side of the stage. That there has to be stale by now. That's not oh, absolutely. Oh, and the back throw. I love that. Mix up his DI. Not to show him where you're going to send him. Finally taking the stock, but I don't know how much uh, expiry yeah, that stock had. Back to a normal game off of that dash attack coming out from Schmeldis. And here we are. Let's see what both players can do. They were playing that last stock very, very tightly. So, yeah. uh, really, like, I, I'm looking forward to see what these, these last four stocks have in, in store for us. For Ooh. both players, 
I mean, Eld is starting to take, uh, get taken on a tour of uh, town and city here. Absolutely. It's a beautiful, beautiful area. And just like you said, uh, this last game was going to be a doozy. They're kind of bringing all of their tricks out. Everything's coming out of the sleeve. If there's any cards you got, you want to pull them very quickly. But you want to play as safely as humanly possible. And I think that's what we're seeing from both of them. Completely even game. These side blast zones are really, really good. Oh, man, is he going to be able to get back? Coming up from Eldis, and that is exactly what you need in this game three number situation, especially on your opponent's second stock. Agreed. You want to take their stock very quickly, and you want to do it in a way that is going to humiliate, if not demoralize, your opponent. Because let's talk about Peking. That was one of the crispiest edge guards we've seen this entire stream. I have to agree with you. The momentum is heavily in Elvis's favor now. Nitro kind of stemming the damage. Only 37 taken on this new stock. But it's got to be pretty demoralizing to know that you lost that stock in a situation that you should have been able to get back from. But honestly, Elvis just being aware of uh, the Arsen Joker having a poor recovery. And we might see a repeat of last time. Oh, no. Gonna be there, but not quite gonna be it. Oh, great Rebel Guard! Will do but it. Man, those multiple jumps of Dark Pit taking the stock and dying in that same right hand yeah, corner as Joker a, a second time has gotta hurt. Big props to Elvis for actually being able to close that out on Town and City against.